Hey everybody, it's Pat here and welcome to our community launching workshop. I'm so happy that you're here with me. And first of all, just a huge congratulations for showing up today. Uh, this is uh, part one of, of your journey into getting into community and making it happen. But I'm not here by myself. I'm here with a great friend of ours here. This is Alexis over from Circle. What's up, Alexis? How are you? Hello, Pat. I am excited to be live with you today. Everybody in the chat say hello, Alexis. Alexis is over at Circle, and she's been helping me and Team SPI with a fun little challenge that we've been doing uh, pretty recently. There was a challenge called the Build Your Dream Community Challenge that uh, literally just kind of wrapped up, right? Uh, what was this challenge about, Alexis, before we move on? Because we have some winners to announce as well. We do, we do. Before we get into the meaty content, the Build Your Dream Community Challenge was a three-day challenge that broke down bit by bit the beginning steps of launching and building your community from scratch. And it was really inspiring to see so many people outline their community, share who their community was for and, and what they wanted to offer. It was really cool to see people so engaged. It was super cool. And if you are in the chat right now and you participated in that challenge, give us a whoop whoop. Uh, and even if you're a little behind on that, that's okay. You can catch up, obviously. But even if you didn't participate in this challenge, this will be a useful workshop for you. We have a lot of things to go over, so make sure to take notes. However, you do have access to the replay, which is available right here, exactly where you're watching this right now. This will turn into a replay right after, so uh, there's that. But we have some winners to announce from that challenge before we dive into today's stuff. So why don't we quickly announce who those winners were. The community participants in that challenge had to submit a, um, a video to actually show us what they built. We had several submissions, and uh, why don't we just say congrats to the two winners who get uh, some love from Circle, uh, some extra, uh, I think, pro account access for free, as well as a one-on-one -on -one chat with me as well, which we'll schedule afterwards. But our first winner is Shannon. Shannon. Woo, congratulations, <laughs> Shannon. Yes. That's awesome. She has this really awesome community that was built for people who want to transform their backyards in a way that um, you know really attracts with native plants, the right kind of pollinators, and just kind of transform that backyard. And I can imagine, Alexis, we talked about this when we were jamming last week about like different kinds of ideas that you can have in there. I mean, I had so many ideas. I do uh, some gardening myself um, of like people just sharing pictures of their backyard, asking for help, like, hey, I have this disease on this plant. What is it? really cool things that can happen in a community like this. Yes. Congratulations, Shannon. I am so happy for you and loved watching your community uh, tour and excited with what you're building in your backyard and helping others do the same. So cool. And we also have to congratulate our second winner. We were only going to pick one, but the submissions were so good. So we added two. And we have the sisters and best friends, Nancy and Amy Harrington. Yes, they are best friends and they are sisters. And they are welcoming more people into their sisterhood, as they say, to help uh, women entrepreneurs, to help them uh, with their passion and to make an impact in the world and also for personal development as well. And so we're proud of you. And honestly, of all the communities that I saw submitted, Alexis, I don't know if you thought this, but this one was like, so well designed in, in just three days too. It was so amazing. Yes, they really went all out on their branding. They, they uh, as you can see, they designed their headers and they went all out and they outlined a plan of their next steps, how they're gonna launch. It was really cool to see them walk through this. For sure, but obviously everybody who participated in the challenge is a winner because you've already started to make progress. And again, even if you haven't yet, don't worry, we'll catch you up. And before we move on to the meat of today's presentation, Circle and Alexis have a few gifts for you. So why don't you go over these super quick? I wanted to make sure we put these up front so that you don't miss them. Even if you didn't participate in the challenge, yes, Circle has extended these gifts to you. The first one being this one right here. Yes. So if you're familiar with Circle, you know that we only ever do 14-day trials, but just for the Build Your Dream Build Your Dream Community Challenge and SPI. We put together an exclusive 21-day trial of Circle. If you haven't already signed up, you can do that at try.circle.so forward slash SPI challenge. I will also drop that in the chat. And then the second special gift is if you have already been in Circle and you've been building your community, you are deep into the challenge and you're ready to go to that next step, you can use code SPI challenge uh, for 20% off Circle's annual pro plan. And that uh, that coupon code does expire June 2nd. So you can always take a screenshot of this with your phone or on your on your laptop. And uh, that, that code is going away next Friday. So let's dig That's in. That's awesome. 
Thank you. Thank you. Also, right before we dig in, I do see that Amy of the Passionistas community we just saw is here in the chat right now. She says, wow, thank you so much, Pat and Alexis. Nancy and I are freaking out that you picked uh, us. We cannot wait. Uh, it wasn't just us, too. It was the Team SPI reviewed them as well. So the whole team got behind your community. Honestly, everybody who submitted was great, and you've done so much work in such a little time. But speaking of so much work in such a little time, why don't I begin? Alexis is going to go off video here while I uh, dive into the presentation. So here we go. Thanks, everybody. All right. So this really starts with this event right here. This is where community really started for SPI. This is an event that I threw in 2020 along with my team, or in, uh, excuse me, 2019, called uh, FlynnCon. And this was a way to invite people over, not just to learn business, but about my family and about how we do what we do and productivity and whatnot. And this was my wife on stage. So yeah, she's real. A lot of people don't think she's real because she never shows up to these kinds of things. But she showed up. She's real. People got to meet her. And what was really cool is that afterwards, we ran a survey. And this was the most common thing that we saw. People saying the best parts were the conversations I had with people in the session, uh, in between the sessions inside the foyer, right? Which was really interesting because it's like, okay, we put and plan all this stuff. We bring all these great speakers in but the number one people number one thing people loved was all the time in between all that stuff to connect and this was i think really obvious why it happens is because people love conversation and connection and community and all those kinds of things and it really made us think, okay, maybe one day in the future we should build a community for SPI online so that we can have these moments in between in the foyer online and more accessible but of course 2020 happened and an event that was supposed to happen again and again just got delayed and delayed in 2021. So obviously times were tough. We weren't able to run these things in person. So we decided to, you know, move things forward. Now you might have you might remember Clubhouse. Clubhouse is still a thing, but not quite as popular. But this was around the time Circle also came out. And this was at the time where of course we were all craving connection and community because we just weren't able to see people and meet people in person anymore. So we decided to actually not just build communities online, but really change our entire business model. We then started to think about how can we make this about all of us together, not just Pat Flynn, not just Team SPI, but collectively this incredible brain trust that we all have as entrepreneurs uh, in this in this uh, generous community. How do we how do we work together? So we built a community called SPI Pro, which launched in 2020, and then later we came out with the Learner Community as well as um, our All Access Pass, which you'll hear about in a little bit. But what's really cool now is our entire business actually has changed. Community has now become our business model, which is really cool. And the cool thing is, it's something that we now teach. Just today, we actually just launched a brand new course for those of you who are All Access Pass members. You already now have access to this. It's called the Community Business Blueprint, which is really exciting. So go and check it out. If you're not in All Access, we'll tell you about that in a little bit. But you can actually get the training now to build your community and go through the process of designing it from scratch and launching it. And we will be talking about some uh, elements of launching today. But for right now, if you are ready to start learning about how to launch your community, we're going to go over it. Even if you have a small community or a small audience, this will work for you. So give me a thumbs up or any emoji that you'd like actually in the chat because we are about to get started. And a little air horn for you just to kind of wake you up because this is about the time that you're going to want to start taking notes and all that kind of stuff because uh, we got a lot to go over, like I said. So awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you, everybody. Again, for being here, we have over 300 people watching now, which is fantastic. So I'm so excited about the new course that just came out. I'll tell you how to get access to that in a little bit. But for right now, let's talk about launching your community. It's always great to think about how we might launch these things that we're creating before we even commit to creating it, right? Because then we can get excited about it. We can understand that this is achievable and something that we can actually do. Now, whenever we think about launching in the world of business, right, you see this rocket analogy, right? We want to like launch into the stratosphere. We want to go big and just explode out of the gate, right? But the truth is when you're launching a community, that's not how you want to do it because launching a community too fast can actually work against you. There's actually a lot of benefits and things that can actually happen and, and can only happen when the community starts out small. It's more intimate and, and those kinds of things, right? So no, we don't want to launch huge and feel like we need all this protection and stuff just to have oxygen while it's happening, which I know during launches can sometimes feel that way. Uh, but we, what we want is to launch like we're launching a restaurant. Now, I used to have a website called Food Trucker and help uh, that helped people start food trucks. A lot of people use those food trucks to then start their own restaurants, but the approach is very similar, right? You don't launch a restaurant by just opening up doors on day one, and that's the only time people hear about it, right? 
you got to launch with a little bit of finesse, right? And so that's how we're going to launch our businesses with community. What I love about the restaurant analogy is that when you go to a restaurant, right? Also, tell me in the chat, what's your favorite restaurant? I'm just curious to know what kind of people we have here today. We might have everybody from Applebee's to you know Ruth's Chris in the house. I don't know. No shame either way. I appreciate you. But I love this idea of a restaurant analogy because when you sit down, you have a meal. And with the people that you're with, you're having conversation. And no, sometimes you don't even know what those conversations are going to be about. But you know that those are people that you want to connect with. And you're sharing. And you're breaking bread together. You're eating steak together or tofu or whatever. And it's just such a fun experience to have. And one that you hopefully would want to come back to the restaurant for, right? And the staff members there, their, their job is to just serve you, right? You're, they're not talking the entire time. They might talk about the specials. They might talk about some interesting facts about the restaurant, especially if it's more historical or if the chef is very well known. But other than that, the staff is there to serve that audience and to make them feel like there's a safe space to eat and chat and have a community. We got a lot of uh, my wife's kitchen, Michael, that's probably the best answer that you could give, right? Uh, the Capitol Grill, Thai food, nice steakhouse is awesome. Legitimate Indian, I agree with that as well. So here's the pre-launch challenge for us with community, right? An empty restaurant is not a good sign. Imagine you open a restaurant, it is empty. How is that going to attract people in? A person might walk into the door and go, wait, nobody's here. It must not be great, or I don't want to be the first person here. Uh, maybe the food's not very good. They start making up stories about that. So when you're launching your community, you don't want it to be empty, right? Which is a kind of a catch-22, because how can you launch a community if it's always going to be empty right at the start, right? Which is why what we're about to teach you is going to be something that will help you through that, right? Right? But remember, the reward after this, when you build your quote unquote restaurant or your community, the reward of post launch, what happens after you go through this process is that great restaurants grow because of word of mouth. In most cases, I go to different restaurants because that's a restaurant that somebody else told me was awesome, that I should check out, that I should definitely go to, right? And the same thing happens with communities too. Great communities get talked about at the water cooler, with friends, with family, in niches, in communities. And we see this happening inside of SPI Pro, and especially in the All Access Pass with everything everybody gets access to. They're talking about it with other people. So this is why we have our referral program now to reward those who will help us grow the community from the inside, right? But this is the analogy I want you to take forward when it comes to launching your community. You don't have to go big right away. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it. So here is the structure of our workshop today in our training. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about idea and validation as well as setup. These are easy things. We've done uh, a little bit more detailed work inside of the challenge that many of you had just recently gone through and more so inside of the Community Business Blueprint. There's stuff to help walk you through a lot of that stuff. But we're here to talk about the launches. Phase one of launch, then phase two, and then your actual launch. Yes, there are stuff that happens before the actual launch. The actual launch being, hey, this thing is well known now, let's open up the doors. The restaurant's now officially open, right? We're gonna get there, but you don't wanna officially open until some other things happen beforehand, right? And then, of course, there's stuff that happens in post-launch, which we'll cover as well to keep you excited about what might even happen after you officially launch. So let's talk about idea and validation, right? Really quick, in order to understand whether or not this is a community you even want to build, you're gonna wanna make sure that, yeah, this is something that people would actually care for, right? So number one, level one of validation is very simple. Do other communities like this already exist? And this is where a lot of people already get caught up. They're like, yes, which is why I shouldn't create one because one already exists. But that's not the way to go about it because remember, every community is different, just like every creator is different. Every creator, every community has its own thumbprint, personality, culture, and char uh, character. And that is all driven by you and how you set it up and the tones that you set in there, right? So even though there might be a community that already exists about a something similar, it's not gonna be this exact same community that you are gonna build. And some people will wanna flock to your community over another because they prefer your style, your way of teaching, your way of communicating, or just you as a brand, right? So if other communities out there like this exist already, then that's actually an awesome sign. That's actually a good sign. The market is proven and now you can kind of come in with a specialty or a special way of doing something, a particular style, if you will. If a community doesn't exist about a particular thing, then that's good too because there might be an opportunity there. But you're gonna have to go a little bit more deeper into what might 
actually work or not. This is where level two comes into play. Has your audience been asking for ways to connect with each other or are they finding ways to connect already? Perhaps on social media, you might find that there's a lot of conversation happening around the topics that you're talking about. Perhaps in the comments of your YouTube channel, you're gonna find people connecting with each other and getting excited about a particular thing. Perhaps that you're getting a lot of emails from people saying, hey, I'd love to connect with you or where else can I find people like this? These are often good signs just from the pulse and getting a, a, a pulse on the community and a read on a community that way. My favorite way to validate a community is to actually set up a mini moment or a mini opportunity for that community to come together. Because if you set up something like what we have today, a live stream, it could be a live stream on Facebook or Instagram, it could be something uh, where, and I see a lot of great questions coming in, by the way, we'll hopefully reserve some time at the end for questions as well, and Alexis will come back uh, to, 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 to offer some service uh, for us as well for answers. But my favorite way is to just see if the community is even there, right, in some capacity. So an event like this, a live stream on Facebook, Instagram, or perhaps a webinar, a little bit more formal about a particular topic that people wanna learn about. Setting up those and seeing if people register, if nobody registers, well then, okay, maybe that's not what we should create a community about quite yet. If people register, okay, great, that's a good sign. And then of course, if they show up and start to get active and engaged, just like many of you are engaged right now in the, uh, in the live stream, that's a good sign, right? So like, this is why communities about communities exist because as you can tell, people you know, love community and circles just provided amazing spaces for that to happen. My favorite way beyond that is just they show up and want more, right? They show up to the webinar and they're like, let's do that again, let's hang out again, right? I know some people who validated communities with simply a WhatsApp group or, or group text message with a small community they have in their locale or online and that creates opportunities for those people to create a moments of communication and, and correspondence with each other, which is cool. So let's keep going here with the setup now. Now you definitely wanna keep it simple. We talked about this during the challenge. Keeping things simple to start is gonna be so important because as you begin to sort of see this menu of items that you can put into your community, you're gonna find that there are a million things you can do in there. You just want a few things to start with. Even when it launches publicly, you don't want it to be too overwhelming. You don't want it to become the remote control where this, curse of bells and whistles comes into play. I once heard that phrase and I love it because there is a curse of bells and whistles. You wanna put all the bells and whistles into this thing to make it as great and, and, and add more value, but there's a point at which there are too many things and it could be overwhelming. What if it was simple? What would it look like? That's what I really want you to focus on. Um, I was gonna mention like those remotes that you get. I think I have one nearby. You know those remotes from like AT&T or something that had like a billion buttons on them? We don't use all of them. We, we use like five of them, right? You wanna build only what you need to build to make this community thrive and you can grow from there over time. And then finally, you wanna definitely invest in great software. This is why Circles here, they've been our partners, not just through this challenge, but basically ever since we started our communities in 2020 and Circle, I'm also a full disclosure an advisor to the company as well as an affiliate, so keep that in mind. But um, there's a lot of software out there. You're welcome to do your research too, but we want to help you move faster and get through uh, a lot of that uh, research process. And we've done that research for you. Circle's the best for sure. So uh, yes, all right. Now we're gonna go into our launches. How do, we, how, do, how do we even get people into this thing? And remember, you don't need a lot of people, and this is where the benefits happen with being small. It's more intimate. You're more able to connect with people. And this is why for phase one, I want you to think about something called the alpha launch. We often hear about this thing called the beta launch, right? The beta launch, and you gotta be careful, by the way, just a little side note, when you talk about your community publicly and you're like, hey guys, it's the beta launch of, of my community. Sometimes in some niches, beta just means sucky version of, <laughs> and we don't wanna position our community like that, right? We want it to be like a first opportunity for people to come in, right? But even before the beta launch, it's really important to think about the alpha launch, which is sort of like, going back to the restaurant analogy, the private VIP dinner party, right? hey guys, I'm opening a restaurant, but even before it's open, I wanna invite you to this exclusive evening where I'm just gonna treat you. There's only two things that I have on the menu right now. It's gonna be bigger later, but I wanted to just bring you in and have you meet each other because you mean so much to me. You're a special part of the community. And this is why the alpha launch works because it feels like an invitation to something that is just starting. And there's this idea that in the alpha launch, okay, like of course there's nobody here. The restaurant's not even open yet, but you feel special because you got invited to it, right? We'll talk about who to invite in just a minute, but this rewards your most active and motivated users and customers, right? Philip says, this is fantastic, awesome. Thank you, beautiful mystery as well. 
It rewards your most active and motivated users and customers. Great, you have some repeat customers. You have people in your brand that just are always commenting. You know who these people are, right? Especially if you've been doing your thing for a while and creating. You know that there's some super fans in your audience perhaps or really active members. They might be. They might feel really good to get a special invite to come to this alpha launch or the VIP dinner experience, right? There's also the idea that you can test your systems. Cool, you don't have to build out everything, but now you've built in the process of signing up and onboarding, which is key, but also like how do people like it and what do they not like about it? How can I make it better? How can I make it less confusing? How can I get my team involved and kind of understanding how this works? You can start to test things out in a place that's safe for you to do to do it because again, you're inviting these people in. It's very known, you're up, up front with them that this thing isn't even created yet, but you essentially have a room in the back of your restaurant for this, for this that's semi-decorated, but that's where the food is and that's where you're gonna have conversation to start with, right? Which is where you can test your menu, right? James says, make them feel special, exactly. So you can test your menu in there. Hey, let's try this one kind of signature gathering that we're gonna do where um, you know we're all gonna share a little bit about ourselves and our business with each other and comment on, on each other's and let's just try that to start out with, right? And this is where a lot of those beginning relationships can happen that can then turn into awesome suggestions, awesome feedback, active people who will be there now for when your beta launch happens. Now it's no longer a ghost town. You already have conversations in these spaces that are inside of your, your place. And again, they understand that it's completely new and they feel special. And for you, again, it's a safe opportunity for you to work out the kinks. And this is great because a lot of us have trouble a lot with software sometimes. Software can feel like a new language and it always is in the beginning, but of course, Circle makes it a lot easier. But even then, it's gonna be new for you. So this is where you can start to get things going without having to worry about everything being perfect. In fact, if you're waiting for things to be perfect, then nothing's ever gonna happen. So why don't you imperfectly launch this thing with people who the fact that it's imperfect makes them feel even more special. They're coming in early, right? Do you need them to pay to get access to this at this point? That's gonna be really up to you. I would say for an alpha launch, a special invite, imagine it again as a restaurant, alpha users, maybe five, 10 people even to come in to a special VIP dinner in the back room with the special menu. No, hey, this is on me. We're gonna come in here. I want you to be a part of this. And all I ask for you to do is to leave feedback, to let me know how you feel about this. And when we launch this thing, I would love for you to be an active member and even welcome some of the beta members that come in. That's super valuable, right? That's super valuable. And now it's no longer a ghost town. So we did this with SPI Pro. We invited people in, we had an amazing launch, we got feedback, we since rearranged things, we removed things, we added things, all as a result of those people who came in during the alpha launch. In the beta launch, obviously, you collect more feedback and you implement some of that, you, you, you choose what is great and you lean into that, you remove what's not working and you just kind of organically start to mold this thing over time with your people, right? With your people. Those super fans who get early access, free invite for feedback, absolutely, just like I said, for sure. Be a great way to do it because that's often more valuable than just a little bit of income at the start. The income will come later, right, when you build something great. So this is how you approach it. In fact, I would do it with a video to start out with. Imagine that you have been an active member of a community and all of a sudden the founder of that community, and by community I mean more on a public level, on Twitter or on Facebook, Instagram perhaps, you get a video from that person who you follow, who says, hey, I see you, I've noticed you, I'd love for you to be a part of this. Why don't you come in, there's only gonna be a few of us and I'd love to get to know you a little bit more and have you, you know, tell me your ideas on how we can make this community even stronger together. And a video that does that, which might only take 30 seconds to a minute, is so easy to do. It could just be in a DM somewhere or a text message even. And oh my gosh, like you will have people there. And that's a great place to then be able to get feedback on the ideas that you have about what might be in this community. What is too much? What is too little? What have they experienced in other communities that they wish existed? Again, because it's smaller, you're more likely to not just get that feedback, but have it resonate with you a little bit more, right? Jamie says, this is such great info for me as we've launched our community over uh, at Podcasters Platform and I'm looking at ways to make our community stronger, awesome. Now, even though you might have a community already, find some of the special members of that community and invite them into a private dinner, if you will, and collect feedback that way, right? But we're not done yet. 
because we got phase two coming up. So that's phase one. Again, alpha launch, that can happen a month, maybe two months before you actually wanna officially launch or have a beta launch. And that's great, again, because it gives you an opportunity to test your things and it's okay if it breaks. There's not that many people and those are people that already feel special and will probably go out of their way to make sure it's great moving forward, right? That's the beauty of this thing. Okay, so phase two. This is sort of the, the analogy in the restaurant world would be what they call a soft launch, right? You might have been in soft launches before. Let me know in the chat if you've ever been to a soft launch of a restaurant, right? It, feel, it, it still feels a little special. You're one of the first people to get access to this. This is where you would if you offer free alpha members to come in to help in exchange for feedback. This is where you'd start to then ask for a payment if it is a paid community. There's such thing as a free community that can still be great and wonderful you for you. That could be a free community that's often treated as a lead magnet. It could be a community that is an add-on to something that people already have like a course. That's okay too. But if you're gonna be launching a community from scratch and you want people to pay for it, a beta launch after, again, all the kinks have been worked out. You understand a little bit more of the language that this audience will respond to. You have some of the spaces set in place. Your menu is a little bit bigger now, but this is where you can start to now ask for a little bit of payment here and there, which is really nice. But you still want to reward them. Hey, our menu is a little bit of a discount for you right now, right? I wouldn't, this is a big mistake that a lot of people make when we launch anything, which is discount, like saying that word discount you gotta be careful about how you use that because you can eventually train your audience to just only act when there are discounts, sort of like a JCPenney situation. Did you hear about that story, JCPenney? Everything inside of JCPenney is on sale. That's how they train their audience. And one day the CEO came in and he said, hey, let's just like mark down the prices. Like why do we have to say it's on sale if everything's on sale? Let's just mark down the prices. And people went ballistic, right? Because their audience for JCPenney was just so used to seeing things on sale. They were like, oh no, it's not on sale anymore, even though it was the same price. There's just a lot of psychological stuff that happens with pricing. So when it comes to a beta launch, right? And again, I'll go over exactly what goes inside of a beta launch and how that might go. But a beta launch, you want it to be early access pricing, right? Advanced pricing, um, champion member pricing, founding member pricing, right? These are what we would call your founding members, right? Your alpha members are sort of like even like double founding members or super special champion partner founding member kind of people, right? Um, but your beta members where you open the restaurant for, for, for a couple days or a week, right? And with a beta launch, yes, you'd wanna open it and then close it, that urgency of getting in, being one of the first to get into this thing before the end date. And the end date's really important because that provides urgency, which is needed for a person to make a decision. If it's always open, the worry is, oh, I can get it later. But hey, if you wanna be a part of the founding group and get advanced pricing on this thing and be locked into that pricing month over month or quarter after quarter or year after year, well, then you gotta get in by this date or else you miss out. Now, a person has to make a decision whether or not they wanna go in the restaurant now because they're not gonna be able to get in at that price anymore. And they're gonna be, again, feeling special as an early or founding member. Inside of SPI Pro, in fact, we have founding members that, I mean, there's several of them still there. And inside of Circle, it's cool because we have a little tag next to their name that says founding member. So anybody new who comes in will automatically see who the founding members are. And guess what? Connections happen. Founding members are helping new members. New members are asking founding members about their experience. It's an amazing thing. And that's one of the cool things about Circles is the tagging situation. Anyway, phase two, right? The beta launch, AKA the soft launch. Now, why is this important? Again, it's important because it builds buzz with a sense of urgency. It prepares your staff, right? There's a little bit more people now, a lot more uh, goings of going ons. There's more spaces to interact in. Not a, not a lot, more than the alpha though, but not a ton, but still. We're training our staff, getting them ready for what's going on. Uh, we're refining our log logistics. At this time in the beta launch, you should have a, 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 a nailed down onboarding process, right? This is where you nail down your onboarding process. Onboarding is what happens when a person signs up. Where do they, what's the email that they get? What, where does it direct them? Is there any confusion? If you have a community, one of the best things you can do to increase your retention rate, meaning people who continue to stay in and just make the experience great for the members there is to offer a great first impression with onboarding. Your beta experience is where you really wanna nail, okay, this is what we think is gonna be a great onboarding process. And even during that launch, making changes on the fly if you need to, to make that even smoother because that is the first impression people have of the community. Maybe the onboarding process includes sharing a little bit about themselves in the welcome section. 
then going into the area that talks about the rules of the community to set the tone of the space and then introducing them to another spot. In the onboarding process, also really key is you want to make sure that there's no dead ends. You always want to go from one thing to the next and the next because you get them while they're hot. You get them to start interacting. You get those comments and replies back from already those first uh, interactions. And now you've showed them that, okay, yeah, this is, this is cool and there's some stuff going on here, which is great. Cool. So let's keep going here. You get more feedback early. Again, more people coming in, more feedback, which is great. And you can boost your revenue, which is fantastic. The beauty of community in the world of revenue and as it injects into your business, that's one of the things about our course, Community Business Blueprint, that's really great, is we spend a lot of time in, in terms of how it then injects itself into your business, right? The uh, Matt has a module, I think it's module six inside of the course, that's all about pricing and profit and positioning. It's really amazing. He's kind of a master at that. Jillian talks about the why and all the things that you need to know psychologically before you create so that you know that you're bringing the right people and you can stick with it. Um, I have several modules in there as well. And we have Emma from Circle as a, an instructor in the course as well. But boosting your revenue is key because you also have the idea that there are recurring payments. And I gotta tell you, for the first time in SPI history in 2020, when the launch, when we launched SPI Pro, we had recurring revenue. After 12 years of business, it was the first time I had recurring revenue. Now, yes, I've had revenue every month, but from different sources that were all one-time payments, one-time affiliate earnings, one-time this, one-time that. I've had a couple of recurring payments through affiliate things like from ConvertKit and stuff, but with my own products, never. Now we have community, and it's great because the community continues to grow, which means our recurring revenue continues to grow, which means we have now more resources to put into the community, which then continues to grow the community. We have this beautiful flywheel. If you saw my email today on Unstuck, we were talking about flywheels. Community is my favorite way to build a flywheel because when you build those experiences inside the community, those community members sell the community itself. It's amazing. And we'll talk about that in sort of the post-launch strategies to market your community out there into the world. But let's keep going here because I'm just getting, I'm just getting, as you can tell, I'm a little bit passionate about this stuff. Air horn for that. Boom. So here's some beta launch tips for you as well. Uh, Philip says, will this stream stay online to watch again later? Yes. Yes, it will. Uh, limited menu, right? So again, don't have a hundred different places people can go to, especially on the beta launch or ever. Uh, but especially in the beta launch, you just want like some big hitter spaces and and, and maybe one or two signature uh, gatherings for people to look forward to. That's the other thing about community that's cool is having events sort of laid out into the future um, gives a reason for people to stay in, right? Especially if they're really good events. It's really, it's, it's a really neat um, strategy. For example, here we have a number of events laid out. Uh, this was a calendar look at our community inside of SPI Pro, uh, Ask Me Anythings, and some meetups with different people. One thing we love to do in our community is actually allow community members to create their own events inside of SPI Pro, and they get to teach. How awesome is that? Now they get to practice, they get to teach, they get some business perhaps, and um, it's just it's just everybody wins in, in that situation, which is really great. So I said limited menu, open and close launch period, like I said, to get people in, to help, help them make that decision, and then celebrate your founding members, please. Like these are your golden members. Yes, your alpha members are gonna be your like platinum members, right? Like treat them like gold, obviously. But your beta members, you need to treat them like like gold as well. Not gold because you're gonna get a lot of money, but because of the value that they are giving to you as being founding members. Founding members in there, and again, you don't need a lot. In fact, there are many thriving communities on Circle with 20 members, with 50 members. And in their first launches, just having a dozen or so still creates a sense of connection that people are longing for and, and, and are missing in this world right now. And then you can offer something special. Like again, special pricing, don't call it a discount. Yes, you will be raising the price later. Please do that because this will help people make a decision to come into the to the founding one. But don't call it a discount. Call it special advanced pricing because it's of benefit to come in now, right? Not a discount. Discount to me says, hey, you know, like this may not be as valuable as we're pricing it to be. So let's like remove a little bit of that just so, so hopefully you can get in. And yes, those do work sometimes, but then you, you're, you're, you're saying something about your product if you discount. However, in this case, let's flip the story. Hey, because you are a founding member, we want to reward you for that. So get in now at this price and you'll stay at that price ongoing over time. And of course that locks them in uh, as well. Now, 
all things said, you have to have a great experience in there, obviously, or else nothing is going to work out in the long run for you. But um, what's really cool about people who use community and business is actually communities help create more business. This was a uh, really cool chat I saw on a Zoom the other time we ran this presentation um, a while back where Joe said, I found that I make a lot more from my members from consultations that are directly due to conversations I've had with them in the community, right? So you could have, for example, a free community to bring people in, they're warm, and this is where you can now have clients come in from your community who are already talking about the problems and challenges that they're having, and they could potentially hire you from there. Or maybe they're already in a paid community and they're paying to get access to each other, but now they wanna get access to you directly, which you could potentially charge for, right? Cool. Chris says, how long should each stage last? There's no perfect answer for that. However, I'd say you want the alpha one to be a month or two at least prior to when you are planning to actually publicly launch your event uh, or, or your, your, your community. Um, and the official, official public launch happens after the beta. So you don't have to necessarily have in the roadmap specifically when your public one is gonna be, but I would definitely have the alpha and beta sort of planned out because you might want to spend more time with your beta members to build it out and it might take more time before you feel forced to launch on a particular date in your public launch but um the more and better experience that you give to the beta members then you can plan and start to pick dates from there i would say one thing that is often asked of us is well should we require an application in order for a person to get into our communities um we chose to do this with spi pro and we chose to do this because SPA Pro is for a specific group of people in our audience. In fact, in many cases, the community that you create is not going to be for everybody who comes across your website or your brand ever, right? It could be for a specific sub-niche that is going to be a little bit better for them or better suited for them because of the things that are happening to those people in that particular sub-niche. For example, in SPI Pro. SPI Pro, specifically for people who've had established businesses email lists at a certain size or have had a certain number of business dollars come in by a certain uh, period of time in their business journey because those conversations that are had amongst those people are gonna be very different, right, from those who are literally just starting their business and trying to even figure out what their business is. So we wanted to make sure that SPI Pro, which was our first community, was built specifically for them and therefore we needed an application process. Now the application's kind of cool, which if you wanted to just read our application, you can, you can obviously apply to Pro too if you'd like, but Pro, uh, the application is great for a number of things. Number one, obviously it lets us uh, know whether or not these people are qualified for Pro, and if not, we don't leave them hanging, right? We say, hey, by the way, there's these other things that you can get access to to get you to the point where then later you could become a pro member should you qualify, That's right? So don't leave people hanging if they get denied for sure. And obviously we now have the all access pass, which is you know perfect for the beginner anyway, which was a second community that we uh, launched later. I'll tell you about that in a sec. But uh, the application process has a very similar feel if done correctly to like a college application, especially if the community is positioned as premium, especially if it's hard to get in, right? And you do wanna be truthful, right? Like I know some people who have application processes simply because it feels this way. I would still have a clear understanding of who gets in and who doesn't and, and, and actually be truthful to that, but it's up to you. But there's this idea that when you get in, it's like, oh my gosh, like I got in, that's great. And you feel sort of, you feel proud of that and you feel then it's up to you to kind of purchase and, 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 and get in from there. And we have many SPI pro applicants who come in and, and who do get denied because we want the quality of people to be in there of the right nature for those conversations and connections and masterminds and all those kinds of things that we have inside of pro. But even then, an application process still makes people fairly special, uh, especially if they get in. So there's a little bit of a preview of some of the questions that we asked. Do you have an online business already? Obviously. So we have certain things in there. This is using type form, I think, where if they say no to that question, then we already know it's a, it's it's um, something that we then redirect people to some beginner information for. All right. So inside of your community, remember, uh, we talked a lot about this in the challenge. This is spoken a lot about inside of the community business blueprint, but this idea of like what goes inside, right? You definitely want to have different spaces for different things. You want to have your signature events. You want to have clear idea of where things are happening, right? And you're not going to know exactly where all these things exist right away, but it is something that you're going to want to collect feedback from over time. Your beta users are going to be important. You're going to want to 
actually have moments where you ask them. And one of the one of my favorite things that we do inside of SPI Pro, uh, I got to hand it to our CX team, like Jillian, Ashley, David have done so amazing at collecting feedback for the purposes of making the community better. We have what we call town halls, right? So if you imagine a town hall like in your local community, that's a space where anybody in the community who's interested could come in and voice their opinions on something. We can talk about certain things. We can share ideas that we have and we can get an instant gut reaction from people on whether or not that's something they wanna try or not, right? One thing inside of Pro that we're trying out right now is something called Thumbnail Thursdays. So we've had a lot of people dive into the world of YouTube, for example. So we have this ritual now where every Thursday we have Thumbnail Thursday, where anybody who's creating a video can share their thumbnails and I and other people from the community can come in and express what they think about those things. Thumbnails being a very important aspect of YouTube, of course, if you know that. Um, and that becomes like a little thing that we're testing, right? And so later on, we're gonna get feedback on whether or not that was actually worth continuing or not, right? So Thumbnail Thursday is, is great. And you can just make those things up in your community, create those rituals and have them become a normal routine that people look forward to, right? So now we're gonna get into the launch and post-launch stuff. And when it comes to launch, right, that's when you're opening your doors. And this is the most powerful way to launch your community is with the power of story. This is the treasure chest that now exists inside of your community is story, right? Story is, is amazing. And the fact that you already have alpha and beta users in there at this point, right? It, it's hard to collect stories about the transformations people have gotten before the community has even started, which is again, another reason why the beta situation is great because now you can have some time in there, you can help people through things, they can help each other, which often happens, and now you're gonna collect these stories from people who have made connections with people that they wouldn't have made otherwise, who've gotten advice from people that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise if it wasn't for this community that you're building, who wouldn't have uh, gotten these transformations in their business, in their lives, in their garden, in their, uh, in, in their, their, their personal growth, whatever it is that you're teaching and, and, and offering help with, these transformations are what sell the community, right? Easy, 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 story, right? So collect the story. This is why having rituals inside of your community, such as sharing wins or sharing stories, story time Saturday, Saturday story time, wh like whatever you wanna create. These are moments and opportunities for people to then share and then there's gonna be some stories that happen and you see in the communities where you can go, oh my gosh, like, the, I, like this has happened several times at SPI, Jillian or Ashley will be like, guys, you need to read this and our minds are blown, right? And what does that do? That always makes us wanna reach out to them and connect with them and stuff. And that's what you could do too with your people. So many amazing things and stories have been told inside and transformations have happened that you can then bring these stories out into the public, on social media, on your YouTube channel, in your podcast, write a blog post about these transformations, and you don't make it even about the community. You make it about that person. You make them the hero of the story. This goes along with something that we've, if you've been a part of my brand for a while, you know I talk about this book all the time, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. He talks about this idea of your customer, or in this case, your member is the hero of the story. And when you market your community, it's not about you. It's not about you, it's about them. You make them the hero of the story. So you invite a member onto your podcast, which guess what, we do from time to time. And even on Fridays, sometimes we even hand the microphone over to a member of SPI Pro to actually teach. We make them the hero of the story. And just naturally, without even having to try, people get curious about, oh, this, this is the caliber of person that I can be with in SPI Pro? Oh, let me check that out. Right? And obviously we have call to actions to go and check those out, but it's not about us. Inside of the All Access Pass, I'm gonna share with you a fun transformational story that happened very recently from somebody who took our YouTube course accelerator. Our accelerators are when groups of people can go through one of our courses together. She had a transformation that happened and it just pumped everybody else up. And I'm gonna share it with you. It might pump you up too. It might make you wanna become a member of All Access Pass if you aren't, right? So we do this all the time. For example, we have uh, Brenda here, who's a photographer, who is a member of SPI Pro and has gotten access to All Access Pass and has taken a number of different courses and workshops from us. And guess what? I invited her on the podcast and we talk about her. And without even prompting, she'll mention SPI Pro. She'll talk about it without even asking. And it's great because it's, it's the most natural kind of feedback that you could ever get, right? Here's Maria. 
Maria participated in one of our SPI Pro challenges where we had everybody pitch their business in a 60 second or less video, one take, no editing. And she did such a amazing job that um, I brought her on the podcast and we talked about it. Actually, that was the prize for, for, for that particular challenge in October of 2021, I believe. Uh, but it was amazing. And then here's what happens when you provide these experiences and you share these stories outwardly, right? Uh, this is Maria's podcast, 583, if you're interested in listening to it. Uh, word of mouth happens. And this is where the community can start to grow from the inside, which is awesome. Um, and it's about the experience that you create for people in there, right? And we live in a world right now that looks like this. Let me know in the chat if you agree that this is the world we live in right now, where we're being fed so much content. Some of that content's good. This person's content on the screen right now maybe is not very healthy, but this is the world we live in now. There is not a shortage of content and information out there that's happening, right? And it's just being force-fed to us, really. I mean, you have an interest of any kind and you go into YouTube or especially TikTok and a lot of these other algorithmic-based places and it's like, oh, you want that? Let me give you everything right? So overloaded, right? And that's not a great experience for a human being <laughs> uh, to have these days, right? And the cool thing about this is, yes, people come for the content, but they stay for the community. And this is my all-time favorite picture of this entire presentation because I've been to parties that look like this, right? It's not fancy. I mean, they have red cups, but all these amazing people, this, is, this must be like a reunion of sorts or a community event. It doesn't even matter what it is. People come for the content, but they stay for the community. There's not content happening here at this event. I mean, there might be one little presentation here and there, or there might be a stage show where the community is like of dancers come in, right? This is the world that we can create for our people, where you sit down with a foldable chair on a Costco table and you eat some macaroni salad and some burgers and you just guess what you just have a good time with people who are like you who have some common interest some common value who you're getting to know you're going to be cross meeting people you're going to be introducing people to each other who wouldn't have met otherwise and this is what creates that block party that then happens every single month on your street this is what creates that amazing thing that you're just it finishes and you're like oh i can't wait till next month to go with that because yes Red cups, baby. <laughs> Everybody in the chat's talking about the red cups. And again, I love that photo because it really speaks to what this is all about. It's not the fancy tables. It's not the fancy decorations. Thankfully, Circle gives us these things to make as fancy as we want. But it's not about even the tools. It's about the people coming together. And when you launch small, you can go big. So alpha launch, remember, private dinner invite. You are a restaurant. But what makes a restaurant successful is not even just the food there. It's what happens in this situation here, right? So I want to ask you, what was the most valuable thing you learned today? I've had a lot of people I could see ask about All Access Pass and more information about that. I'm about to get into that because we just today actually launched our brand new course, Community Business Blueprint. So this is a big day for us over here at SPI, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to share with you. But I want to know in the chat, what was the most valuable thing that you learned Today, James says 100% experiences for the first time last month. Tell me a little bit more about that, James. Sarah says also we can create a little corner of the internet where people can enjoy the content and not be bombarded with other ads. Yeah, that's so true, Sarah. You know, when we launched SPI Pro, we ran a survey to our audience. We're like, what do you want? Uh, at Reef, man, you bring back so many memories of of the income stream with that. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for the super chat. You didn't need to do that. Um, when we launched SPI Pro. Um, we asked all the people inside of SPI, like, what would you want to see in here? The last thing on the list was content. 5% of people wanted more content. Now, we do have content in there, and if you're a part of All Access, I mean, you get access to all of our courses, obviously, but it's about how you go through them with other people. That is the power, right? So doing staged launches, the phases. So uh, Chris says, question, should we invite so-called competition to alpha and beta? I mean... Can they even compete with you if it's your community and your way? I would 
understand what your superpower is so that your competition actually now becomes complementary, right? They, they become complements to what you're doing, not competition, right? The idea of creating an alpha launch takes the stress off for sure. Yes, Trish, exactly, right? Most valuable stages of launching, really, really helpful breakdown. I appreciate that. Now, may I ask all of your permission to talk a little bit about our brand new course, Community Business Blueprint. I always wanna ask permission first before I dive into this. And I'll bring Alexis back in here in just a minute to talk a little bit about uh, Circle and bring back the special things that Circle has to offer for you, whether you took uh, part in the challenge or not. And then she and I are going to maybe cover a few questions here together. She's been uh, patiently waiting as I've been just talking my butt off here, but uh, I appreciate you uh, hanging tight for us, Alexis. Um, so just want to make sure that it's okay that I can share a few of these things. A lot of you have asked questions about the All Access Pass, and now's the perfect time because in two days, on May 25th, Ashley and the team are gonna be leading our Community Business Blueprint Accelerator. And an accelerator is where, if you're a part of All Access Pass, you can go through these courses together. They're actually structured in a way with asynchronous learning, meaning you can go through the course material, but then you can come together and ask questions with community members who are going through it with you. You can get help and guidance from my team. Yes, let's do it, Pat. Chris says yes, Kim, yes. Joyful Art Journaling says yes, please. Okay, you got it. Thank you so much for that, I appreciate you. So our brand new course, Community Business Blueprint, literally launched today inside of the All Access Pass. And it's really exciting because we've been leading up into this and a huge shout out to our community experience team. This course is actually our first course that have had more instructors than one. This is myself, this is Jillian, our community director. We have Emma, who's the community education manager at Circle and Matt, who's our just CEO at SPI, uh, obviously, but also just a financial pricing profit wizard, and he brings his talents into this as well. So like I said, this is inside of our All Access Pass, and if you don't know what that is, this is pretty new. This is where you can get access to all of our courses, and again, we just added a new one, the community one, and there's workshops in there as well, more than a dozen. YouTube, podcasting, affiliate marketing, email marketing, all the courses that we pre previously sold individually are now all accessible there. And you can see a whole bunch of them there inside of the All Access Pass, which is hosted in Circle. Thank you, Circle. Uh, they're all there, including right there in the middle with the toolbox, Community Business Blueprint, right? You get access to an active community of other like-minded entrepreneurs like you, all going through these courses together. Access to my team and Team SPI and Ashley, and we have Heather now on board with us to help you through a lot of this stuff. Access to our team is really important for your success. Guided Pathways. So it would be one thing to just be like, hey guys, here's all of our courses, pay a lot of money for them. That's not doing you any good. You need some guidance through them. Hey, if you are a beginner, these are the four courses that you need to go through in sequential order. If you're a podcaster, go through these, take the advertising course and then take the video podcasting course after that. We guide you through them so that once you're finished with one, you could just go right onto the next without having to worry about anything else. And then finally, like I said, our accelerators. So if you're an all access pass right now, you're welcome to talk about it in the chat <laughs> because I know a lot of you love it. Um, it's been the best thing that we've ever launched. Like honestly, the feedback has just been incredible. Accelerators are classes of people that, get, that go through a particular course together at the same time, which is super handy because you are 60% more likely to complete something, studies say, when you're going through it with other people. It's like going to the gym. Going alone is okay, maybe easy at the start, but when push comes to shove and you get tired, you need some help and you need some accountability to keep going, right? And actually start seeing those results. And ever since we shifted our business model to not just one-time course sales, but for community and all access pass, it, it's everybody's benefited from it. Everybody's benefited from it. So here are some of the courses that we once previously sold one off. You can see the prices to them. One, two, three affiliate marketing was 699, 499 for email marketing magic, heroic online courses, five, nine. I mean, these are expensive courses, right? So I wanna ask you in the chat, what would you expect to pay for access to all the courses, access to our team, access to guidance through these courses, access to accelerator groups to go through these courses with other people? Where would you where would you guess that price point would be knowing that those courses alone cost that much? Well, I'm just gonna tell you, it is the equivalent of $59 a month. So you or build quarterly, so it's 179 per quarter. That's it. This is an absolute steal. And I'm so confident in this promotion right now because it is working. And the reason why it is so quote unquote low is because we wanted to lower the barrier to entry, but we know that if you get in here, you could see that this is something worth 
sticking around for. And so actually, this is a way for everybody to win. State of the Franchise Gaming says $5,000. $59 a month. Again, you're not billed monthly, you're billed quarterly, so $179. And in fact, if you actually get access for a yearly plan, you actually save two months worth, right? Which is which is wild. So all you have to do is go to this link that's gonna pop on the screen right now, smartpassiveincome.com slash AAP for all access pass. Philip says perfect price. Yes, you know, the 499s and the 699s, that was a lot for people to to, 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 to to sort of invest in, right? And it's still worth the money for sure. But we want that barrier to entry to be lower to have you see those results faster, right? So that it's almost a no-brainer. Hopefully this is a no-brainer, right? So as you can see here, when you get in here, you can see it's a quarterly subscription or if I had uh, the that annual subscription, you save 60% at $5.99 per year if you wanted to go down that way. Now these accelerators, like I talked about, right? They work. This is Chrissy, who was in our previous accelerator about YouTube. So we ran a group of students, hundreds of students. Uh, Ashley ran through our accelerator within a six week, I think four to six week uh, course to go through it together. And Chrissy said it worked, right? So she had a YouTube channel that was getting not really great video views and she kind of like left it, but came back to this and actually put some effort in. And look at that right there. Her video that she created, her first video after going through our accelerator for YouTube has 20,000 views. Her other ones has just had hundreds. She said it worked. So these accelerators will help you get results and our accelerator for the Community Business Blueprint happens on May 25th. So it's gonna happen very soon. So we want you to get in now while you can. Smartpassiveincome.com slash AAP, the all access pass. The accelerator kicks off in two days with our sort of roundup call that Ashley and, and Heather are gonna be at, and then the actual coursework starts the week after. But we want you to get in so you can get in, get prepared, and get going. Again, you can take it at a pace that works for you because it's asynchronous, right? We ran cohorts for thousands of dollars that required two, three hour calls per week and all that kind of stuff, and that stuff worked. I mean, we had like a 90 something percent success rate, but very few people had that amount of time to, to, to offer to it. So even with one and a half to two hours per week, you'd be able to make this work. And even then you still have some time to catch up. There's, I think week six is gonna be a catch up week and it's already ready for you to come into the All Access Pass and register for it. So I wanna bring Alexis back in real quick to talk about some other things that Circle wants to provide for you for getting into community and getting excited about it. Uh, Cause Circle does have a few gifts for you. So let me bring uh, Alexis back. What's up Alexis? Yes, I I'm back. Hello. That was an incredible presentation. And if I was at a stage in my business where I wanted access to all that information, like I'm, I think you sold me on all access pass. Like I, I want to go sign up for all access pass. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, we wanted, so I got to give credit to where credit's due. Ashley, this is Ashley's baby is the all access pass. She was the genius to come up with this framework of taking all these one-off courses that were being sold randomly all the time and just were also pretty expensive to put them into a package that would serve the audience better. And her and Jillian and the entire CX team just did such a wonderful job of, of putting this together. And we had to sort of like rip the Band-Aid off before we promoted this, but we did it. And I don't see no scars anymore. Uh, this thing is thriving and it's awesome. So uh, let's talk about Circle really quick. Again, we recommend and use Circle all the time. We have a, free, a few free gifts for you for you know, getting into uh, communities. So what's what's up first? Yes, so we w I wanted to offer something for whatever stage you're at. So if you are just thinking about community and you want to test out Circle, I highly recommend signing up for our 21 day trial. If you go to our website right now, circle.so, you'll get a 14 day trial there. Or if you sign up through this link, try.circle.so, forward slash SPI challenge, you'll get a 21 day trial of Circle. And this gives you an extra week to really play around, start building out your community. Now, if you um, participated in last week's challenge and you're already you know, into your week one or two of that trial and you're really starting to see this come to life, I wanted to offer you a 20% discount off of our 
annual professional plan. Our pro plan includes live video, courses, extra spaces. Um, if you use code SPI challenge, you can get um, that 20% discount off of our annual pro plan. And that does expire June 2nd. We actually extended this code just for the accelerator program. So if you're jumping into the accelerator on the, you know, community business blueprint, uh, we wanted to give you an extra week to uh, sign up for annual pro plan. And then if you have questions, I don't know, maybe you're curious, maybe you're using another tool and you're not sure if is circle the right fit for me, how does circle fit in with my other tools? Um, maybe you have questions about integrations or APIs, or you just want a full demo of what circle can do. You can book a call with our team and I'm actually going to drop that in the chat right now. I'll drop the link to schedule a, um, a call with our team in the chat. And, um, our team actually opened up their entire availability just for, just for the SBI community. So they are ready and you can actually book a call as early as tomorrow morning if you want to talk with someone on our team. So um, we tried to offer something, you know, regardless of what stage you're at in building your community. And uh, I'm really excited to see what what continues and excited to see where this accelerator takes people. I, I, I'm like, I want to join. <laughs> yeah. For sure. There's a good comment here from Oliver I just want to bring to light, which is maybe I'm the only one feeling this way, but to experiment with a community platform, I would need two to three month trial. 21 days feels too short. You know, honestly, the idea of getting in and trying it out is to be able to see how easy it is to use and play around with it. Uh, less so, like, let's actually build the community and see if it works and then commit to it, right? By then, you already want to have commitment to a product. And, and again, we recommend Circle. So any any other comments or, or, or concerns about that, Alexis? Yeah, I agree. I think a, an aspect of a trial is to qualify whether the tool fits the needs that you're trying to build, whether that be a cohort-based course launch or a membership community. Um, that's really the point of the trial, not necessarily to you know build it and launch it in 21 days. I do think that takes a little bit more time, like you mentioned. Yeah, and that's yeah. why and, the accelerator you know is eight weeks long too, because right. it takes time to launch it. Exactly. And again, the accelerator is right here, right there okay smart i feel like a weather person just i don't know how to it's like where opposite. is it <laughs> yeah uh smartpassiveincome.com slash aap would be really excited to see you in there ashley and the team is ready for you if you uh when you sign in um you'll be immediately uh see on the bulletin board a way to register for the community business blueprint accelerator which again the kickoff call just kickoff call no no work needed to be done yet uh on the 25th and then the work starts next week and again You'll be able to go through it at a pace that works for you, and uh, it's asynchronous learning, which means you don't have to come on a call to learn and, and lecture. It's inside the course already. So Coach Ryan says, nailed it. Um, thank you all for being here. Awesome program today. Thanks so much. Curious with the live video feature in Circle, are there limitations to that feature? Wonder why the program today is on YouTube instead of Circle. Well, I can answer the last part of that question uh, for you. Um, it's on YouTube because I have a quite of a large YouTube audience and a lot of the YouTube audience here is not on my email list and wouldn't have known about this otherwise. So we're able to get people to organically find this and even in, in the replay, uh, organically find it. The live video feature inside of Circle works really well, but it's mainly for the people who are there inside the community already, less so for the public, if that makes sense. So I'd love to hear um, Alexis's take on that as well. You nailed it. You nailed it. Live video is is to help you replace tools like Zoom for your community, but nothing can quite replace YouTube, right? So it depends on where you've already built your audience. Our live video feature is really used for um, live video that's happening inside of the community, like whereas Zoom. something like, like a Zoom, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like a Zoom. Um... Oliver says, uh, all Access Pass works well. I like the courses in the community. Thank you, Oliver. I appreciate that. I tried many communities in the past years. Yours works the best. Uh, I appreciate that. And, and again, I can't take full credit for that. My entire team is amazing and and, and has, has stepped up so much, especially in the last six months. And, you know, credit to Jillian, too, for, you know, getting the things into place to coordinate all these people participating in this course for us uh, to bring it to where it is and now it's Ashley and Heather and the team to, who are going to rock it out with the with the people who are going to take this accelerator so uh any more questions to finish off we'll go for maybe one or two more minutes here we're right 
past the hour, so we're perfect on timing, which is great. I wasn't sure how it was going to go because there were 120 slides, but I think we did pretty good. <laughs> um, I also realized yeah, that a lot of the time. slides were like the building of a slide. So like six bullet points was like seven slides or something like that. So it wasn't as bad as I thought, but uh, hopefully pacing was okay. And I'm uh, again, grateful the fact that, you know, we've already had 1300 people come across this video already, which is awesome. And again, we hope that you will check out all access pass. Uh, you will have uh, about a day to uh, get in before the kickoff call on the 25th. And we hope that you enjoy it. So uh, let's see any other final words, perhaps of maybe, maybe a final piece of advice, something inspirational, perhaps Alexis that you could come up with for anybody here who's starting their community, or maybe they already have one, but you see communities all the time. You're in this world. What do you have to say? Yeah, I love this. I would say be really honest with yourself about what your expectations are. You know, um, what is your pacing? What is your capacity? And can you give yourself the permission to start small? So maybe you already have a community somewhere else, but when you're testing something new and you're experimenting with a new business model, like a membership or like a cohort based course, there needs to be a level of giving that some space to really grow so that you can learn from it. So mm -hmm. I would say give yourself, you know, one to two to even three months to really experiment with it and allow it to be novel, al allow it to be new and uh, allow you, you allow yourself to maybe even be a little bad at it. Um, because I think that's where uh, testing and experimenting and, and putting in that effort uh, allows you to learn so much. You don't have to be perfect right out of the gate. Mm. You have permission to try because it's through that that, you know, progress comes and learnings happen and then you can get to that point where this community eventually has a life and a heartbeat of its own where you might not even be necessarily as needed anymore right that's the cool thing about this the community becomes its own being if you will and then of course it's always special when you do come in but in the beginning it does take a little bit of work be honest with yourself in the amount of time you can succeed with a community that you might only have one or two hours to dedicate to per week that is possible but if you were to build a community and design it in a way, we talked about this in the challenge, that would require 20 hours for all the activities you wanna do and you only have a couple, then that's not gonna work. But when you set those right. expectations correctly up front and match it, you bring the right people in, so many amazing things can happen. Uh, to finish off here, Welding Wellness says, what are some ways to market your community? My favorite way is to tell stories of people who are in the community. They will promote it for you better than you can, right? Now, opening and closing doors or having moments where people have to make a decision by because of a deadline or a bonus that goes away, those work really well too. But by far, sharing the stories, especially the transformational ones that happen from members of your community is really great, which is why the alpha and the beta sort of founding opportunities are great because that's how you start to collect people in there for then those opportunities and transformations to happen. Um, Let's see, can one set hours the community is accessible, active daily and close in the time staff is not available? Uh, you can definitely set those expectations up front. I mean, we have that inside of our uh, business where we're just not available on the weekends and we also have Friday off. But as long as you're up front with that, then definitely obviously provide value during the other times when it is open. But when you're clear about it, there's no issues. It's when you say, yeah, we're always gonna be here for you and answer every question, but then you don't answer them because it's the weekend and you never said anything. So again, set those expectations right and 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 that's how it can work for you. Um, awesome, Chuck has a question that may be best asked for a, uh, where would be a good email to ask um, questions that maybe, people didn't get to today or we weren't able to get to or, or might be a little bit more um you know specific absolutely you can email our support our our support team is amazing uh you can do that at support at circle.so and if you have more technical questions and really want to get into the weeds um you can also book a 30-minute call with our team and i'll drop that link back in the chat as well that's a great way to you know, go into the more the technicalities if you have a lot of questions on if Circle is the right tool for you. Awesome. And here's that link from earlier that somebody was asking for. I think it was Mel. Uh, Try.circle.so slash SPI Challenge. Alexis will pop it into the chat one more time for you. And remember, this is the link here that I'd love for you to check out. This is smartpassiveincome.com slash all access pass so that you can get in before the accelerator begins. And I just want to thank you again for your time today. A big applause to you and a big thank you to Alexis as well. Thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, let's do one air horn for you. There you go. I know you like that one. <laughs> uh, you're
you're all amazing. Thank you for your time. Hopefully you've gotten some value out of this and we'd love to continue to help you through our brand new course inside of the All Access Pass. And uh, we'll hopefully see you there. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. Bye. Bye.